All right, next up we have Lewis Kaplan from the University of Cambridge, and he will be telling us about uh, Rios. Hey, uh, yeah, so Rios is a Julia package that we've been developing since uh, about October last year, uh, which is also the time I started learning Julia. Um, I was using Python before, and uh, I've really enjoyed learning Julia, but I'll just give you a quick overview of uh, what Rios does. So quickly, uh, just so I can get an idea of where people are at, um, anyone who has some idea of what rheology is, if you could just put your hand up. Okay, so that's, I kind of planned for that, so that's good. So in brief, rheology is the study of things that deform and flow, and you want to characterize those things using some parameters, some kind of material model. Um, so I put one slide just to give you some kind of intuition. So on the one side of the spectrum, you have elastic materials, you apply a force, they deform instantaneously, you remove that force and the shape is restored instantaneously. There's no time anywhere, you don't need to worry about time. Um, on the other side of the spectrum, you have viscoelastic materials, so you have a force and you get a strain rate, so obviously time's important. And then somewhere in between, you have these magic viscoelastic materials. Um, you can represent them schematically or the model of them using these springs and dashboards and other sort of elements. But think of uh, earplugs, memory foam, silly putty. I was going to try and get some silly putty to bounce it around, but I couldn't find any. Um, but yeah, so that gives you some intuitive sense of what viscoelastic materials are. Um, and then why do you care about rheology or viscoelasticity in general? So uh, my main focus is biomechanics. So I've got two examples from biology here. Um, it turns out that if you can really understand well um, the rheology of cells, it can really help you characterize and potentially diagnose uh, certain types of cancers. And um, that second picture, those small gel-like baubles, are actually uh, 3D printed uh, mice ovaries. And uh, they implanted these ovaries in mice, and these mice were able to have successful pregnancies. Um, and it turns out that if for any kind of biomimicry, but tissue engineering in general, you want to recreate the viscoelastic properties of the tissue that you're trying to engineer synthetically. Um, and it also turns out that in the 3D printing process, you need to understand the rheology during that process when you heat up the material, how it's going to behave physically. Because at the end of the day, materials exist in space and they have physical properties. And a lot of the time, you need to understand what those physical properties are. So to give you a quick idea of what the kind of data flow pipeline is, you normally have three columns of data, roughly speaking, time, stress or force, it doesn't matter, and then strain or displacement, it doesn't matter. And um, you'll have some model, viscoelastic model. You might want to try out a few to see which uh, is kind of the constitutive model for that material. Um, so in Rios, we've implemented about 10 of the most commonly used models. Um, but the, one of the big points of Rios was that it should be easy for people to add their own models if they want to. So that is a feature that we've tried to um, maintain in Rios. Um, so you have your stress, strain, and time. And then you have your, your model. And then you have some relationship between stress, strain, and time, uh, depending on what kind of test you have. Um, and then it basically reduces to optimizing to find the best parameters. Um, so your model is actually embedded in, in this j function or this g function. You're just doing a convolution, and you'll predict some uh, strain based on your stress or vice versa. And you'll optimize to, get, to find the best parameters for that fit. Um, and so you get your parameters. Sometimes you might want to do a fit and predict. Um, for machine learning people, it's kind of analogous to testing against your validation set or uh, just testing your data against data you haven't trained it on, basically. Um, so quickly, to just give you a sense of the codes, um, because one of the big points, one of the big aims of Rios is to try and make it easy. Um, I gave you the biological examples on the second slide, I think. And um, so a lot of biologists, particularly, are increasingly over the last 10 or 20 years realizing how useful it is to understand mechanical properties of the biological materials that they're investigating. So it's got to be easy. So hopefully, when you see the code, you'll agree that it's fairly easy. Maybe you won't, but please do give me feedback at the end. So um, that's, this is, this is uh, some real experimental data. Um, here is the strain. So someone's just deformed a, a biological material very quickly, almost instantaneously. And then over this period of time, 
the uh, stress has reduced. So this is called a stress relaxation experiment. Um, uh, in the first case, you might want to fit this model here, which is a standard linear solid model. Um, so you have three parameters. You've got two springs and a dash plot. And if you represent that algebraically, you'll see there's three parameters there. It's quite straightforward. Um, there's the codes. You load in a model. Uh, you've got a convenience function there for loading in the, in the file, in the data. You might do some pre-processing. There's some pre-processing functions in Rios. Um, and then you choose your model you want to fit to. And then the last one you predict. And then you can see how good the fit is. You can see it's not a great fit. This isn't the right model for this material. Um, so we might want to try a more complicated model. Um, what we've done now is swap that one of those springs for a spring pot, uh, which is a viscoelastic element that is derived from fractional calculus. And it's useful when your material behaves in a power law-like behavior. So a lot of viscoelastic materials have power law viscoelasticity. Um, so it's a similar thing, but the constitutive equation is a lot more complicated. Um, it, it turns out that the fit is a lot is much better in this case. Um, it's not a question of just finding the, the, I mean, you could just add as many parameters as you want um, if you want the perfect fit. But uh, again, it's the predicting part that can help you validate if it's really a good constitutive model for that material. Um, so uh, this is a good example of where things can get a bit more complicated and where it's really nice to have um, a, a package like Rios for biologists or anyone else who's just not that interested in coding. I think in a similar vein to the first talk of this session. Thanks. Um, there's a lot of people doing materials characterization who just don't either care about coding or just don't have much experience coding. So uh, that E function is a mitag left function, and it's not very nice to implement. Uh, fortunately, uh, someone, uh, John Lapierre, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing his surname right, uh, he has implemented a really nice Julia package for that function and also inverse Laplace uh, Julia package, which was also really useful in uh, some other parts of Rios. Um, I think that's everything I wanted to say on that slide. Um, yeah, I mean, hopefully you can see that the, uh, the code isn't too complicated. Um, and I think I'm a bit early, but probably it's good to finish quickly as we're running late. Um, the main point of Rios, lower the barrier to entry for Anyone who wants to do materials characterization fits some models to their data. Um, there's some other things which I haven't talked about which kind of facilitate it being used as a teaching tool. Um, it's fast, so before I was doing this in Python and I was outsour outsourcing the mitag left function to Fortran because that's uh, by far the most computa computationally intensive bit. And it was taking me about five or six hours to fit one data file. Um, I'm sure I didn't optimize it very well. I'm not a particularly great Python or Fortran programmer, but um, for comparison, one data file takes about 10 to 30 minutes, thanks, to fit using Rios. So massive improvement. Um, a kind of general side effect. Hopefully, it might re improve reproducibility. Uh, more people can check the codes, have their eyes on the codes, make sure it's correct. And yeah, thank you. Uh, just a quick thanks to all the contributors as well. So um, the other three people in my group who've done a lot of background work and some coding for Rios as well. Thanks. Uh, does anyone have a question? I do have one. Uh, do you have a question? Uh, uh, before I say my question, is I also just recently came across that metag leffler.jl, so I'd also say thanks to the yeah. <laughs> guy who wrote it. Very nice. Yeah. Uh, my, my question is just, just kind of out of curiosity, um, how often in your field people use these kind of schematic models versus like solving continuum mechanics problems, like kind of modeling it as a partial differential equation? Um. In this kind of way of thinking, where you just want to literally just poke a material and understand something about it, how it behaves materially, um, you normally always start off with this schematic representation and then use that to derive the constitutive differential equation. Yeah. Thanks. 